Paul, first day back on the track after the Melbourne Victory game. I uh, don't want to harp on it too much, but what was your assessment of, of the um, of the fixture? Yeah, it was um, disappointing that we didn't get any um, let, uh, points, let alone you know one coming out of a, a big game away from home. Um, we went there intending to get all three as usual, and um, yeah, unfortunately we didn't get any. And um, you know it was, it was disappointing on our behalf that we didn't put up a good enough performance in the second half to get three points. I know Mickey Murray had a very good chance in the first half, in particular hitting the crossbar. Do you think if those little things, I guess, go a different way, go our way, to a different game? Yeah, it's probably the the difference between um, a lot of teams in the league. You know, we um, we take our chances in the first half, and um, it's a completely different story. And we probably go out and win the game. But um, you know, that's where we're at in the moment. Um, you know, they show their quality with the the chances they got. They got. They took straight away. So. Um, you know, credit to them as well. Can you take a lot from the game considering it's, I guess, one of the most informed teams in the competition? They've, I guess, got four wins on the trot now, I believe, or something close to that at least. Do you take a bit of confidence knowing that despite the injuries that we have and missing some key players, we did put up a good performance for the vast majority of the game and we just fell a little short? Yeah, look, we're not going to dwell about it and, uh, you know, put our heads down. We, um, we left with our heads high and we're very proud of the performance we put in in the first half. I think we, um, I think we ran the game pretty much the whole first half. I mean, they had one opportunity, but compared to us, you know, it looked like we were going to run all over them. But, um, you know, unfortunately their experience came over the top of ours and, um, you know, it wasn't to be. Switching focus to this week's game, obviously between now and Sunday against Melbourne City, there's quite a bit of time. Have the coaching staff spoken to the group and wanting to focus on anything in particular yet, or it's still a little too early for that? Yeah, it's still early on in the week. Um, I think it's just important to get it have our day off first and everyone refresh and you know get back down to earth and um you know get ready for another solid week of training it's pretty hot out there this week so you know we're going to look after ourselves as much as we can but at the same time you know really try to work hard to get um the main goal at the end of the week <coughs> which is the three points against melbourne city you mentioned the heat boys out in the park a little earlier today how does how does that go down with you guys having to, I guess, prepare in these hotter conditions, knowing from at the moment really the forecast and the sun is going to be quite cooler? Do you see that as a good thing, bad thing, or it's irrelevant? Um, yeah, it's 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 tough, especially at training. You want to work hard um, going into games, you know, knowing that you've put in 100% during the week. But um, Marco's managing us pretty good with um, the time we train. So we start early and we train, you know, for a shorter amount of time and. He, he just asked that we stay focused for the full however long we train and you know as long as we do a solid session then we can we can be confident. Looking at Melbourne City in particular there's been a bit of I suppose I don't want to say controversy but a bit of talk about them in the current state uh, of the playing group. Does that impact you as a footballer looking ahead of that game or you literally just not worry about what's in the papers, you don't worry about what's being talked about and you just focus on the team, on the opposition and on the day itself? Yeah, well, um, on paper they're probably the strongest side in the league without a doubt and, um, you know, obviously hearing the dramas coming out of there, it's, um, you know, news to everyone but, um, you know, we don't really look at that because we see still, you know, their second string squad's probably a decent enough first team in this league so um you know we're we're very wary of how dangerous you know their backup players are and you know the players they have on the bench so um you know it's probably a good opportunity now to get three points against them while they're you know going through all this drama and controversy here yeah. i like we just said i guess it's a little bit early for the coaching staff to pinpoint any particular areas of melbourne city's play that we'd be looking to i guess nullify but yourself can do you pinpoint certain players that you've been wary about I know a lot has said in the past about penalty takers and free kick takers and things like that. But when does your preparation start for that? Does it start with Frank Hewitt, goalkeeping coach, at the start of the week and separately to the rest of the group, or is it something that you just constantly refresh yourself about? I think it's just a like as being a professional footballer, you're always looking forward to the next game. As soon as one's done, you move on, and you're already thinking about you know who's who's your next target, what's what's the next goal. And, um, you know, we started that early on. We started today in the session already thinking about how to improve things and what we can do better. And, um, yeah, it's, it's like that. As soon as one game's done, you've got to move on straight away and get ready for the next. Just lastly, I'd be crucified if I didn't ask, coming up against, I suppose, one of your mentors, Eugene Galekovic, hopefully in the opposing goal. What's that going to be like for the first time? But um, it'd be good to see to him and I guess catch up with him and also 
guess kind of go toe to toe, both wearing gloves at least. Yeah, it's um, it's good. I mean, um, it's 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 something that uh, I look forward to, especially because you know the only time I was on the pitch with him was I was basically off it. I was on the bench. So now it'll be it'll be good now to actually be able to play against him. You know, like you said, toe to toe, and um, you know he's a he's a good friend of mine as well. So um, yeah, it should be a great one. Do you keep in touch at all, considering you were, I guess, working together for, for so long, especially when you were in, uh, when you were quite young before going to Central Coast? Uh, we only just speak when we catch up, really, in friendly games and uh, away games and stuff. So no, we're not really you know, calling each other every day. <laughs> Just lastly, Paul, before I let you go, um, how important is it for a big crowd at Cooper Stadium on Sunday? It's a 6.30 fixture, weather should be decent for, for a night of football. How important is it to have, I guess, a big home support behind you in, in a very big game, another big game? Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be huge. I mean, we know how disappointed the fans are, especially the ones that travelled when um, we didn't get the result against our, our rivals, Melbourne. So, um, you know, it will be greatly appreciated if they do rock up in, in big numbers, you know. Um, the support means a lot to us and um, you know if they do rock up in big numbers or if not you know we still appreciate the ones that come so yeah